So as Halloween is around the corner, I'm going to be doing a load of Halloween looks again. So this year I'm kicking off with a super easy sugar skull look. For those of you that are more competent with makeup, in the future I will do a more intricate looking one, but I'm going to start off by doing a super easy one that you guys can follow for Halloween. So I'm using my super colour palette, this is the 24 colour palette and I'm using the white shade out of this. I'm using a buffing brush to go over the entire face. If you are interested in getting this palette, you can get it from Crowell and their self, or you can go to Charles Fox in Covent Garden in London. You don't have to use this, I'm using a cream because it's easy to blend other shades onto and you will find it easier if you want to do some shading. If you don't have access to a cream based product, you can just use a white face paint and then use the same technique, putting an eyeshadow over the top, it will work exactly the same. Remember if you're using a cream based product, you will need to set it with a powder. If you're using a white face paint, you won't have to worry about that because it just dries like normal face paint does. For making yourself a lot paler, always remember to take it over the entire face, with the ears if they're going to be visible, down your neck and anywhere else that's going to be on show. I've just dusted over that with translucent powder just to keep it all set in place and I used my M&S one. And now on a small angled lip brush, I'm using some black eyeshadow and I'm mapping out the shape of the eyes. I'm going a little bit lower than the socket bone of my eye and creating this skull shape but I'm also including my eyebrows, that's going to be covered with jewels. Now I've got the rough shape, I'm taking this red eyeshadow by Coastal Sense and this is B09 and it's a pinky red shade. I'm using a flat eyeshadow brush by Crowlin and I'm taking this into the entire circle that we've created. You want to add a couple of layers of this to create some nice intensity to the eye. If you find you're a bit of a messy worker when it comes to eyeshadow application, fold over some tissue and apply that underneath very lightly so that you catch any fall down and this will prevent you from ruining that white base that you've applied. So I've already done one half of my face, stupidly I've done the right side when I should have done the left because the left is a little bit more difficult, but we're going to go with it. So out of that super colour palette I'm taking the black shade, you can use eyeshadow to map this out and I'm using that small lip brush that I used earlier and as you can see I'm doing small dots just so I can map out the shape so if I make any mistakes it's easier to wipe away. So although the design looks quite intricate it's actually very easy. I think the hardest part you'll find is symmetry but if you take your time by doing the dots then you shouldn't have any issues because if you find you've made any mistakes it should be so easy just to blend over with. So now we've got the lines we want to just go in with our slightly curved shapes which is going to create the web effect. It is so much easier to do one side of your face when doing a sugar skull because you want the other side to be symmetrical. If you're doing it all in one go you'll find it a lot more difficult. So now we've got the shape, I'm going to go back in with the brush and I'm just going to drag the lines down just over the dots that I've placed. So this is going to give me a more definitive shape. If you struggle to balance your hand in front of your face, try resting it on the table and this will give you a little bit more of a sturdy, steady hand. So now we've got the shape for the cobwebs and the temple area of the skull. I'm mapping in the shape for the nasal cavity and remember this is the area that doesn't exist in the skull so it's going to be empty. So we're creating two sharp points and then we're going around our nostril area and this is going to be blacked out. Now I'm mapping in the area for the jawbone. So I'm drawing a line from the corner of the mouth and I'm going up at an angle towards the cheekbone and then I'm following that up towards the top of the ear. It doesn't have to be exactly how our jawbone looks but it just needs to resemble. Now we're going to concentrate on the mandible area which is the bottom half, the chin and the jaw. So from the corner of the mouth onto the chin area, I'm drawing a C shape and then I'm just branching off some little lines and this is just going to create some definition and areas for us to shade which is going to shape the skull. You want to keep looking left to right when you're doing this so you can match the first side that you've drawn. Now we're going to go in with a fluffy brush and just blend into the hairline using the black eyeshadow. You can be neater about this if you want, I'm just getting it done. If you want this part solid black, just use black face paint. On the small lipstick brush I used earlier, I'm pulling some black eyeshadow up on the curves of the cobwebs and then I'm using a pointed blending brush just to blend those into the white and this is going to create that shaded appearance, making them look more like cobwebs. I do apologise that I haven't stopped to be on the phone to my nan, but I was going to cinema after this so I was in a rush to get everything done at once, so I had to speak to my nan while I did this tutorial, so I do apologise. So I've gone over it once and blended it all. Now I'm going back in with the darker eyeshadow just along the cobweb lines just to define them and make them a little bit more intense. If you don't have black eyeshadow, you can just draw in the lines with black paint. You don't have to shade, I just think it's more effective. 
Now I'm going over those lines I've put in place around the temple area and I'm using my pointed shader brush just to soften those and create a nice soft gradient. The purpose of adding this shading in is to create a little bit of dimension so it's going to look more skull like and as if these areas are slightly more sunken in. Now the look wouldn't be a sugar skull or a candy skull without a little bit of colour so we're going to add this into the temple area so over that shading we've created I'm going back in with that pink hot pot from Coastal Scents, the B09 colour and on a small brush I'm working that in over the shading and I'm fading it up towards the top where the cobweb line is. Now the shading's done, we're going to redefine the temple line and then on that fluffy brush from earlier we're taking the matte black eyeshadow and we're working that into the temple area and we're going to make the darkest point right in this C shape here and then fade it up towards the cobweb line. Now along the base of the temple we're going to pull a little bit of that black eyeshadow up and deepen that red colour. If you're not very good with blending it's not a problem, you don't have to go in with too much of the dark over the red, just use the red and leave the line more defined, you don't have to do too much shading. Now I'm moving on to the eye makeup, I've put some tissue underneath my lashes to catch any fall down as we're using black. I'm keeping this simple, we're going for a smoky look and we're going to do a C shape around the entire eye, so under the lower lashes onto the top lid and through the socket line. I've patted that black onto the outer third of the top eyelid. And then this is just give us the basic smoky eye look and then it's going to be about blending. I've dipped a fluffy blending brush into the red colour that we applied to the eyelid first and then I'm working that in circular motions around the seam of the black and this is going to fade that out creating a nice soft smoky gradient. Now I'm taking a pencil brush dipped in some of that matte black eyeshadow and I'm working that around the circumference of the eye socket. This is going to create some depth and make it look more sunken. Even though we're going to be putting crystals over the top of this, this will show through in the gaps which will make it look more like the sugar skulls. Next we're taking some red craft crystals and these have got a sticky back to them. And we're going to place these over the dark rim that we've just applied around the eyes. On the inner corner of the eye and the outer side you want to apply smaller crystals and then bigger ones across the eyebrow and the lower half of the socket. I'm applying these eyelashes by Eskido and these ones are Voila Lash. To apply those I'm using duo glue and I'm leaving it to go tacky for a few minutes and then putting it in place. On the other side of my face I've got two floral patterns so I'm going to be recreating these on this side of my face. To do this I'm taking my angled lip brush and I've dipped it in a little bit of the eyeshadow and I'm creating a swirly shape so it's almost like doing a C but going a little bit further. And then like I've done with all the other lines on the face I'm using my pointed shader brush and I'm just blending that out. Over that I'm taking this red from my super colour palette and I'm creating tiny little petals. You can go straight in with a red face paint. I'm doing this because I'm also going to apply eyeshadow over it to set it and then I'm going to be applying black. Using a cream just makes it easier to do the blending. Now as I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, it is super easy because you don't need to be neat. It looks really effective because there's lots going on but it doesn't necessarily have to be super neat. Now I've got the basic shape, I'm going in with the eyeshadow and sitting that cream in place and this is going to make it last a little bit longer and it will also prevent it from moving. By having two of the colours on there it's created a little bit more depth as well and the eyeshadow I've used is the same colour as I've used on the eyes. Now I'm going back in with a fine liner brush and I'm dipping it into that cream black and this is just going to really define that jawline and then I'm using a little blending brush just to pull the colour down to create a little bit of shadow and this is going to make that area of the jaw more prominent. If you're using black face paint just go over this area with black eyeshadow and then blend the colour down and you'll get the same effect. I'm defining the stem of the flowery floral pattern using the same black because as we've shaded over it it's become a little bit muted and we want to make that a bit more defined. Then on a tiny little paintbrush I'm going around the petals using the black. You don't have to do this, I think it's effective, but it is pretty easy, you just need a bit of patience with it. And then I'm taking that small detailer brush that we used to apply the eyeshadow and I'm blending that black line and this is creating a nice shadow effect to the petals. We want to apply the same shading technique to the mouth and around the jaw. So again, if you've applied the original lines using black face paint, just go over this with a bit of eyeshadow to create a nice shadowy appearance. Then once you've blended out the original lines, you want to go back in with the small angled brush and just reline over them so they're more defined. As with all of my looks, it's always about building, so it's good to do the foundations of the lines first and then work into them and then reapply them and then you know they're going to be there all evening. 
Using that thin angled lip brush, we're going to place in the area for the teeth. Although we won't be drawing in any actual teeth, we are just giving the appearance that they are there. So we've drawn the lines over our actual lips and above them and slightly below them and then we're using the pointed shader just to blend those lines and soften them so they look more like a shadow as opposed to drawn on lines. On a clean brush, using a little bit of the white Crowell and Supracolor, I'm placing that between those dark lines and this is just going to mute out the colour of our lips. If you're using white face paint, just dab the excess off onto the back of your hand and use what's left on the brush just to run in between those areas. Next you want to paint the dark line across the middle of your lips and this is going to define the mandible from the maxilla which is the top jaw and the bottom jaw. Now we're going to paint the nose in with the black. I'm using the black super colour, you can use this or you can use black face paint, it makes no difference. Remember if you are using cream products like I am you're going to need to set it with a black eyeshadow so it doesn't move. Once the nose was complete I put my hair into the quickest victory rolls you've ever seen and I put some roses in my hair and that was the look complete. If you like, you could even take it a step further and paint in your vertebrae, it's totally up to you. I hope you've liked it, please give me a thumbs up if you have and leave your comments below. If you haven't done already, please subscribe and if you've missed any of my previous tutorials, you can click any of these three now and they will link you to other tutorials. There's also links in my description bar and you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for watching.